everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Leslie. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be working on the She's Magic um, collection today. Well, I'm going to be using the She's Magic collection today for a layout that I'm making for Lucy's birthday. And the cut file I'm using is from the Paper Issues store. It is for free, so you can just go onto their uh, website and click on the free cut files and the freebies and then you can just get yourself this cut file. So what I'm going to be doing is I am just going to be using the 6x6 paper or the 6x8 paper pad to back this cut file. Now what I also do is I don't only use the 6x8 papers but I use the front cover of the um, of the 6x8 paper pad because it's got those little sample squares or um, little rectangles, the little samples of the paper, what's inside the um, the paper pad and I use those little samples to back the tiny hearts and um, because I didn't want to use a full piece of paper cut up a full piece of paper or you know I'm um, cut into a piece of paper that I didn't need to if I wanted to back a little heart so I just use those little samples and they're quite easy to use because they're so small you know you just um, stick it behind the the cut file and once all the other bigger hearts are filled in so what you can do and what is easier to do and how you sort of get this done a bit quicker is you fill up the big hearts first and then once you get to the smaller hearts you don't have to perfectly size the piece of paper you're backing with so you just stick a piece of paper behind there because it's already covered with other uh, papers with other patterned papers so um I don't know if you, I hope you get what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to be doing that. This took me about an hour to do. I'm not going to make you guys watch that. So I'm going to be fast forwarding to where it's all done. And there you go. And you can see in some of the um, uh, patterns, uh, some of the hearts, the patterns are a lot smaller to um, what the patterns are in some of the bigger hearts. It's because th uh, in those little hearts, I've used the little sample pieces of paper or the little samples on the cover of the six by eight sheet. So the photo that I'm going to be using is of Lucy's birthday and that's her rainbow cake. She had a rainbow birthday party um, when she turned two in November this year. So I'm going to be using that photo and the candle is on, you just can't see, or the candle is lit. You just can't see the little flame. So I wanted, wanted to use a back, um, sort of a colored background because I wanted the white of the, the heart um, to stand out. I didn't want to use just a plain white background. So I'm going to be choosing this uh, white, oh, this pink background, sorry. And I'm taking out, these are like acrylic markers. And um, I've seen some other YouTubers using them to do highlights or to make highlights um, and to splat with it and to make little splatters with it on the paper. So that is what I wanted to do here. But that marker didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. It got me ages um, to get it going, to get the ink to run through it. And then as I wanted to do the splats, not enough ink is coming out the nib to make nice little splats on the page. And um, yeah, so I had to, yeah, I, I was quite disappointed with that because I did buy it from scrapbook.com and I thought that, you know, this was a good make, but obviously it's not the particular make that some YouTubers use and some other crafters use. So I'm going to have to rethink that. So then I decided I'm going to make a frame for this cut file. So I'm putting on a lot of um, wet glue and just sticking this onto the piece I just cut out and it's very wonky it's not perfect you can see that it's hand drawn you can see that I've cut it out by hand so it's really not perfect so then I wanted to add more texture and I took out my sewing machine and I am going to do some stitching now my stitching isn't perfect <laughs> so it really um you know it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder <laughs> that's all I'm saying um uh, halfway through stitching this my bobbin ran out so I had to redo that so this took a while but um, I'm going to be zigzag stitching um, half on the white cut file and then half on the pink paper so that it looks like the cut file is stitched to the paper and there you can see that it is just as perfect as I wanted it so I did leave um, little white threads at the bottom of the paper to sort of 
you know, to, to add some texture and, and, and so forth. So then I added this white piece of paper and it still didn't work for me. I didn't like it. So then I went back to the paper pad, the 12 by 12 paper pad, and I chose a colored background. And guess what I chose? It's a green and I really liked it. So I'm going to be using this green as my back and I, I don't do this a lot I don't use colored paper as my background a lot but in scrapbooking Lucy's um, birthday I decided I'm going to be using as much color and as many patterns as I could because her party was a rainbow party it's obviously very colorful lots of um, uh, uh, different colors and um, patterns and things so yes I'm going to be using a lot of color in scrapbooking this these photos and you're probably going to see a couple of these layouts um, to do with this um, collection and also the theme in the next couple of weeks because I am scrapbooking that <laughs> so um, I wanted to do get this done as soon as possible and how I scrap is I sort of I take out one collection and I take out the photos that I want to scrap and it's usually I scrap and here you can see I'm really really whacking that thing to try and get the ink out and that little splotch that's there is because the nib touched the paper it's not because ink came splatting out and then I went and I traced around the edge but then it fades so quickly so then I went over it again and again I probably went over it four or five times to make it bright enough and every time I went over it it was bright for a minute or two or well for a couple of seconds and then it sort of faded and dried out so I was quite disappointed in that and you can see at the moment it's quite bright the white but then it sort of it fades and I didn't I really didn't like that anyway so how I scrap is I take a bunch of photos which is usually from one event like a birthday and I take a collection and the collection usually has something to do with the theme of the birthday. And I scrap the entire, um, all the photos, uh, the entire event. And uh, yeah, I don't scrap little photo, like a photo from this event and then a photo from that event. And then I sort of do it all in one go so that I stay in the same mindset when I do all the photos so that they look cohesive when I put them in an album otherwise and also to put everything away every time I've done a photo I mean and now I've got the whole collection out and then you know once I finish this photo and then I do another photo from another theme or another day and then I've got to take out a different collection so I don't like doing that so that is why in the next couple of weeks you'll be seeing quite a few of these layouts um, I try to keep them as diverse as I can obviously sticking to the theme but just to keep them as um, yeah as diverse as I can so those flowers um, that I'm sticking there in and, and there you can see I'm placing those flowers that I fussy cut um, from one of the 12 by 12 patent papers um, I'm putting it over the uh, white bits that I was drawing I just it really didn't go for me it really didn't work for me and um, yeah, so I'm just going to be flat gluing that with some wet glue um, to the paper uh, over all of those little doodly bits I did with that white pen. So I'm going to have to get a white pen because I really, I have splat envy <laughs> for those um, girls that can splat with a white piece of paper or with a white pen. So I need to get that. That little flower in the middle there, um, I just stuck over that a little splat that came um, from me touching, from the pen touching the paper. So that worked out really well. And it was already cut in its sort of a triangle shape um, as I cut it from the 12 by 12 pattern paper sheet. That is about it for this layout. Um, I do do a little doodling around each heart and around the photo with my Sharpie just to get um, some more dimension going. Um, I felt that the hearts were a bit lost. They needed a bit more um, differentiation from the background. Um, they needed to be separated a bit more from the background. So I've got this little uh, word sheet or sticker word phrase sticker sheet. And I'm just choosing some words and some phrases that are really cute and that really go with um, with the theme and they're like words like magical, wonderful um, and things like that. So I'm just putting that on the photo. The photo looked a bit lost 
on the on the whole on the cut file it looked a bit separate from the cut file so there i doing a tester behind the um, flower and to see if i like it um, if i do the little doodly bits and i really liked it and there you can see it the faux stitching so i've got real stitching <laughs> machine stitching on this uh, page and then i've got some faux stitching and i really liked how this turned out i like the little pops of black and um, it gives a lot of dimension and uh, detail to the hearts i think it adds something more i wish obviously that i could do that that stitching with a real sewing machine but that would just be sort of insane and i think the person who does that is just bonkers but uh, kudos to those of you who've done it i mean it's amazing <laughs> but no i'm not that adventurous um uh yeah so i'm going to do some stitching at the edge of that pink paper as well some faux stitching and yeah that's it so just a reminder if you have not subscribed to my channel please hit the subscribe button so you can get all the videos that i post see you soon bye